Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a review of the, of the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 lens. Um, and just give you my thoughts and just kind of what it's good for and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've already done a sharpness test which if you head onto my blog uh, under the link which I'll put down below you'll see the sharpness test I've done of this with flash photography for portraits uh, which is, is really, I'm very impressed with it, put it that way. Um, what I'll do is I'll go over everything. First of all, uh, its focal length is 28 to 75 which means it's not quite as wide as some of the ones that you get from Nikon or Sigma they're usually 24 millimeters meaning they're a little bit wider but it is also a full frame lens so it will work if you stick it onto a uh, Nikon D700 or if you have the Canon version you can put it on the 5D Mark II or Mark I or wherever you want to use uh, so that's pretty cool if you put it on your uh, Nikon D300 or your uh, Canon 7D, then there's obviously that crop factor, which means it's got a little bit more reach. So it's almost like 100mm once you're at 75. Whenever you zoom in, there is the barrel extends a little bit. Well, I say a little bit, it pretty much doubles the length of the whole uh, lens. But you get that the same with the Canon and Nikon equivalents. Uh, they all ex is extend out. The filter uh, ring at the front is a 67mm, so quite an unusual one there, 67mm, um, normally they're 77 uh, and that's because having it at an f2.8 means that you need a big bit at the front, but this uses something called XR technology or something, which just means they're able to make it smaller, lighter, more compact. And it certainly is a lot lighter than the Nikon or Canon kind of main ones that they have. It's focusing uh, goes, this has actually got this closest focusing ability of its class. It goes right down to 33 centimetres or 1.08 feet. Um, and it's, you can still hear it focusing whenever you're using it. First of all, let's look at how bright it is. So if you look in there, and then that is it fully, fully big. So we'll stick up the camera just now. Now whenever it focuses, it doesn't go in and out. So if I put the lens hood on top of the uh, lens, not the lens hood, the lens cap, the lens hood that comes with it is this. It uh, fits on nice and snugly like that, just twists on, which is quite good. Uh, but it's quite a noisy focus, listen to this. We'll do that closer. So that's how quick and how noisy it is. Okay, so this is the sound of it focusing. But what you can see is it's definitely quick. Going all the way to its closest of 33 centimeters here, all the way to its maximum of infinity, is there. And how quickly it actually captures focus can be seen here. If we point it over there, done. If we point it over there, and if we point it over there, that's good. Point it at Mr. Hippo. Got it. Okay, so that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty fast focusing, but noisy. Okay. Okay, so this is it at ISO 400, shooting at a 30th of a second. And as you can see, holding it handheld with this smaller camera, it can look fairly smooth. It doesn't really look like there's too much movement happening. This is at f2.8. If we zoom right in and focus, so the focus is very small in this, as in the depth of field is very small when you're at f2.8. So there's a tiny little click left or a tiny little click right and you're out of focus. So you have to be pretty accurate if you're doing manual focusing in video. And the vibration doesn't look too bad when you're shooting at 1080p. I'll hold it still just now. Okay, uh, now to give you an idea of how bright, uh, oh, also the smoothness of the zoom, that wasn't me actually joking there, that was me doing it one hand trying to do it nice and slow and smooth. If I do it slow and smooth again, that's absolutely terrible, it's really sticky. If I do it fast, much better, much better fast. Okay. Now to give you an idea of the brightness of an f2.8 compared to a normal kit lens, which would be at f5.6, 
That's the difference in brightness, 5.6 to 2.8. Two stops brighter. Yeah, definitely the, the zoom isn't smooth. So on video, you really kind of want to not use the zoom. You want to just have it at a position that you want to have it at and keep it there, not moving it around too much. The other cool thing is because it's got a very close focal distance, as in it can be at only 33 centimeters throughout the zoom range, means if I go and zoom right into 70 millimeters at f2.8, there is a very small amount there. In fact, I think I can get closer. That is the closest I can get. And again, holding it handheld, the vibration isn't too bad. You can easily take that out with iPlayer. Uh, with iMovie. In fact, here's a shot with me holding handheld and then with it on iPlayer, uh, on iMovie. So handheld for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And now here it is again with iMovie stabilization. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then zoom back out. Another thing that you sometimes get is a thing called breathing, which is whenever you focus in and out, it sometimes has a focusing effect or a zooming effect where it goes in and out. Here if I have it zoomed into 33 centimeters, obviously it's totally blurry on Mr. Hippo. He is at around about 55 centimeters there. But if I then go all the way to infinity, he just gets blurry. He doesn't get closer or further away. If I do that smoothly again, it doesn't have very much breathing in the zoom whenever you focus it. That's quite good. Okay, next we're going to look at the bokeh effect, the vignetting, and the depth of field you can get with, with this lens. Right, okay, here's the photos uh, where we're zoomed in to 75 millimeters, uh, which on the crop sensor is more around about the hundred and something millimeter uh, length, but uh, that doesn't change the effective uh, or the actual depth of field or anything. So here we're looking at kind of its sharpness, but also its bokeh and its depth of field that you've got. So here we are shooting at f2.8, and as you can see, when you get in there, it is you're only really getting one key of the keyboard in focus. Uh, here I'm shooting at a pretty high ISO, I think, yeah, ISO 1600, so there's a little bit of noise there. But what I'll do is I'll stick the closer up shots of these on the blog. If we go from this one onto the second one, so this is, let's see, we've gone up to f2.8 to f4, so this is one stop difference. If we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What you will see is there a difference in the bokeh or the kind of the blurry bit in the background around the key. So if we go to the first one, second one, first one, second one. So 2.8 f4. So there's definitely a big difference in the blur that you get in the background. If we go to the next one which is f5.6, 0.8, 4, 5.6. Eight. Big, big differences in them all there. So going again from f2.8 to f4, uh, that's one stop, you can definitely see there is a little bit of a colour change or brightness change in the corners as well. So 2.8 is a little bit darker, a little bit more saturated as well it looks like, uh, than f4. So 2.8, f4, f5.6, F8. So here we've got the shots side by side and let's get them a little bit closer. So this will give you a good idea of the difference between F8 and F2.8. Now whenever you're zoomed in to 75 millimeters and you're shooting at its closest distance which is 33 centimeters away from the back of the camera then you're always going to have a very shallow depth of field. So even at F8 here if we look here, the catarrhal button is blurry in both of them. In the f2.8, the one on the right, uh, it's, it's even more blurry, but on the f8, it's still blurry. It hasn't got rid of that. 
Sharpness wise you can definitely see a difference, like you can see a lot more of the kind of slight pattern marbling effect that you have on the actual keyboard uh, at f8 compared to f2.8. Even though the shutter speed was starting to get pretty slow, it was only at a, a 45th of a second, but it's still pretty tack sharp there. And that was also at ISO 1600 on the Nikon D300. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that those came out. Uh, definitely, if you again look down at the corners, brightness and colour and saturation are a little bit different. These are all shot in JPEG, so I don't have an exact 100% uh, control over that. Um, but uh, that's easily resolved in Lightroom. That's quite easy to sort that out. But one thing I'm not seeing that's too that's normally quite bad is chromatic aberration. Definitely on the right. Let, we'll have to zoom in really close here. On the right one here, you can see there's a little bit more green just in the very corners of the black to the white, and at f8, there's barely anything there. So, chromatically, it's still pretty good at f2.8. Usually, you've got a lot more green and red going on there, but otherwise, I'm pretty, pretty darn impressed with that. So, now we'll also look at the next ideas. Okay, this shot here, this is where we just zoomed the lens out a little bit and we were shooting at, uh, on the left here, we're shooting at f2.8 and on the right we're shooting at f8 again. So you'll notice the B is a lot more sharp at uh, f8 than it is at f2.8. When you're zoomed out to 28mm or zoomed in, out, white, I don't know, uh, then the depth of field is a lot easier to control, as in you can make it so you see a lot more or a lot less, a lot easier than if you are at uh, the telephoto range. For example, over here you can see all the way up to the Y is still, uh, you can still tell it's a Y. Meanwhile on the left it's totally blurry. Uh, but that's pretty cool that even at 28 millimeters, you can have a blurry uh, look, which is really cool. Wide angle, close up, and a blurry effect uh, with this lens, I think is really something quite special that's about it. Brightness wise and color wise, there's definitely still something changing in the colors there. It might have just been the camera that was changing that. Um, but also contrast, they would say contrast isn't quite as strong at f2.8, but that's because so much of it is blurry, you don't really notice it. Uh, like, like for example, the paper in the background is really kind of sharp there, it's just a blurry much, which is kind of cool if that's what you're wanting. Um, and that can be cool for video, definitely. Okay, so that's just a little ideas. I'll put these on the blog for you, so see you there. Okay, so uh, that, that's just done the, the photos there. Now, build quality wise, is really cheap, uh, but this lens is cheap in itself. It's only around about the three, maybe four hundred pounds at the most, um, or dollars. Uh, its optical quality is pretty good, uh, especially if you're using it for portraits. The edges are maybe not so good, they can be a bit blurry. Weight and size wise is a lot lighter and potentially smaller than all the other lenses in this kind of range in this category. So it's pretty good if you're walking around all the time. It's a good bit lighter on your arm if you're doing a shoot and you're taking about 800 photos in it. It also has its closest focusing, so that's that's kind of cool. You're getting a proper macro, well, not proper, but it's getting to one to four uh, in terms of macro, so that's quite handy. Price-wise, uh, it's probably the cheapest one that you can get, and you can get them secondhand. And the fact that it's a zoom range of 28 to 75, and it's an f2.8, really is means price wise it is a winner it's definitely something uh, to get if, if you're on a budget the cool thing with it being so cheap is that whenever i go to a nightclub or something i have no worry about bringing this if i were bringing my nikon one which would cost maybe 1200 pounds i would be crapping myself if somebody threw some beer somewhere or if something fell or just anything but if i go to a nightclub or a social event or something i'll stick this boy in boy on Optically, just as good, uh, well maybe not just as good, nowhere near as good, but optically good enough and um, brightness wise, good enough. Uh, so I would definitely use this for loads of situations, uh, maybe if I'm going camping as well and uh, I, I don't uh, know what the weather is going to be like. It's not weather proofed in any way. In fact, I don't think any of the zoom lenses in this kind of category are uh, weatherproof. I don't think it's possible because they all zoom in and out. 
water can get in there, dust can get in there, especially when you're zooming. So you've got to be careful about that. It's not quite as bad as the 18 to 200 millimeter kind of telephoto super mega zoom lens, uh, but it is something to be aware of. The alternatives from Nikon is the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8, and that is around about a thousand pounds more expensive. That's around about 1,100 or so. You can get this for second hand for about 200. Sigma also do a one where, in fact they do two which are very similar to this, where it's a, a 24 to 70, one's a macro and one's an HSM lens. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, more around about the 600, 650, maybe 700 pounds. Still about half the price of the Nikon version, but pretty good, pretty good. I haven't actually had to go with them, but I've heard positive things. Definitely, uh, again, with these third party lenses, I would say always keep the receipt in case you have to take it back to the shop and just say, look, it's front focusing, it's back focusing, it's doing something wrong, uh, can I please get it replaced for, for a newer model or, or just a new one. Okay, so that, that's pretty much the end of the review. So why would I say choose this one? I would say choose this one because it's cheap, it's good, very cheap in fact. Um, you're not going to be too worried about it as you would with your other lenses. Uh, it's a light one so you can have it on any camera. It's full frame as well so whenever you upgrade to another camera, maybe a full frame camera or even film camera, it will work on that as well. So yeah, and I've used it for loads of shoots. In fact, here's some of the photos. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you with some of the shots from, from some uh, modeling which was done uh, recently. Um, and uh, yeah, if you've got the money, definitely go for the Nikon. If you don't have the money and you're trying to be as careful with your cash as possible, I would say this is a top lens to get. Probably can't get better value. Okay, so hope that helps. Cheers. Bye-bye.